macro goals. We are not done yet because macro goals, you will split them into the four goals. One, two, three, four, right? The four objectives of a we need to pack up huh? the four macroeconomic objectives of sustained growth, low unemployment, healthy balance of trade, and price stability. Ooh, at this page, I don't need to spell out in your own case. Now, micro goals, as, uh, as you mentioned, it's about equity and efficiency. So, Paul, my guarantee to you is that if I split the dartboard in this way, it will not change. It has not changed since J1. It will not change when you go for your A-levels. We won't suddenly see government objective becomes profit. No. Okay? Because that's the design of the syllabus. But do you remember in DDSS, the government intervenes with price ceiling, price floor? What was the objective? In DDSS? Why did the government intervene? Because I can tell you in DDSS, we assume the market is perfect. No externalities, no public goods, perfect information, perfect competition. So in DDSS, the government intervenes to achieve equity. To help vulnerable producers like farmers, then you have a price floor. To help low-income consumers afford necessities, hence you have a price ceiling. And you have subsidies that also help them, correct? Yes? So, Jerome, as you mentioned, help consumer producer are absolutely right. Do you also remember in DDSS, we learned about taxes? Now, does the tax help producers or consumers? Would any of them celebrate when the tax has gone up? No. So, there must be one other objective hiding in a corner, lurking in the shadows. I can tell you what that is, okay? So, nothing evades our gaze. Government objectives, macro goals, micro goals, to a certain extent, generate tax revenue. So, occasionally, in your case studies, they will ask whether taxing necessities or luxuries is better for the government. And usually we say, if you tax something with PED less than one, you collect more tax revenue. Yeah? So this is a very small part of the syllabus. And this, like I said, is the first that board we have split. And this stays with you. How does it stay with you? Um, at this stage, I encourage all of you to have a little notebook. Uh, does it have to be a little red book? Okay, it can be a little any color book. So in that book, okay, you will note down some of the key takeaways like these. All right? So before the exam, before you enter the exam hall, you should be flipping through these things. Not school notes. School notes, you're still stuck at content. Now we are talking about application. Are we okay? Okay. Now before I go further, okay, um, can I also ask you a question? Because sometimes you only think of this in exams and you feel terribly alone and uncertain. Under macro objectives, do we talk about inclusive and sustainable growth? Because these are desirable outcomes, you know? Okay, so I'm gonna ask, number one, for the government objectives, do the macro goals include sustainable and inclusive growth? My answer is very clear. You can exclude since they overlap with your micro goals. Micro goals of tackling pollution, which is to restore allocated efficiency. And equity. I mean, equity is not exactly the same as inclusive growth, but close enough. Equity is a very market-specific concept. You want to ensure low-income families can afford a necessity. Inclusive growth is more macro. You want to make sure job opportunities are available for a majority of people, but close enough. So you can focus on the four macro objectives. Okay? 
That also means in the macro environment, whenever you're asked for impact of an event on the economy, focus on the four goals. If you have time, you can invoke inclusive and sustainable growth as your summative evaluation. One of the points that that's okay.